We begin tonight with a water crisis in Flint that frankly should have everyone's attention. Doctors recently found high levels of lead in children in Flint, and it coincides with a switch in the water system. The city has been getting water from the Flint River for over a year because it's waiting to hook up to a new water system that is still under construction. Now, the state says the water meets state and federal standards, but in a year since the water switch, the number of kids with above average lead levels has doubled and in some cases tripled. And to be blunt, according to the CDC, there is no such thing as a safe level of lead exposure, which leads Leads to irreparable damage in children. Governor Snyder said this week that there were, quote, probably things that weren't fully understood when the city switched to Flint water. It is a story where aging infrastructure combined with a financially strapped city has led to an awful situation for residents who have no choice. We are starting there tonight with our Miami contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. Gentlemen, it's good to see you and to talk about this because the problems with the Flint water and the switch over have been happening now for over a year. There's been problems with the smell of the water. There's been problems with E. coli. There's been a, a, a lot of advisories and even, you know, violation of, uh, of the Safe Drinking Water Act. And so now we're at this point where doctors are saying, look what we found. Look what we're seeing now in children. Um, and to me, this news is, is devastating. Nolan, I'm going to start with you. What kind of situation has the state gotten themselves into? Well, I mean, it's clearly a, a health crisis, and it, and it should be addressed that way. Uh, the governor has been distributing uh, quietly, I guess, about 1,500 filters. They need to do a whole lot more than that. People shouldn't have to drink water that's dangerous, and it's dangerous for their children. And, you know, they, may, they probably made a mistake in, in cutting off uh, from the Detroit system before they got their own t pipeline finished into Lake Huron. They're drawing it out of that filthy river. The river has been polluted by industry and residential po pollution for 100 years or more. And so, you know, it's an uncertain process trying to take all those chemicals out. And, you know, you got people turning on their tap and seeing water that's just putrid. And, you know, you, you, it doesn't do any good to test it and tell them, oh, well, it's safe to drink. Nobody's going to drink water that looks like that. Well, you know what? And people can say, well, I don't want to drink the water that looks <clears> like that. But the bottom line here is a lot of people have no choice. You're looking at a city where you've got 41 percent of the people are below poverty level. And this is the choice that they have when they turn on their tap. Well, but even if you, I mean, uh, if you're wealthy, what, what choice do you have but to use the water that comes through uh, the pipes to your house? I mean, yeah, but you can, you can, what I'm saying is if you have money, you can buy bottled you can water. Buy a bottle. Okay, so oh, if you're true. wealthy, you can, you know, you can have whatever kind of water trucked in. You. Yeah, that's my point. Um, that but even that seems an unreasonable burden for anybody to, to be bearing. I mean, the idea that you go to the tap, turn it on, and you can fill it up with water and drink it is a pretty foregone conclusion. Well, you're in paying this country. For that. We assume that, and we pay for it. Uh, it's not acceptable that they can't do that in Flint and haven't been able to do that for some time. I think the question that that uh, that we've been focused on at the Free Press this week is how did this happen and why why was there not more due diligence done to figure out what would or might happen uh, when they switched. And part of this is caught up in the, uh, the, the fact that Flint has had an emergency manager for so long. And, you know, I think there are real questions. I, I'm a supporter of the emergency manager law. I think uh, it's a necessity uh, in a state where the state assumes uh, all the financial responsibility for, for local government. At the same time, I think giving one person that much power is always a little dangerous. And here, uh, I think uh, it's possible that somebody made a decision. Do you really without, think he made a decision, though, in a vacuum, though? I don't think he made it I, in a vacuum, but I do think there was not the, the, the kind of push and pull uh, and the process that you would normally have if elected officials were making that decision. And so I think, uh, it, you know, it, it should give us real pause about how much power uh, these emergency managers have. I think we've come a, become sort of accustomed to using Detroit as the model uh, for emergency management because it worked so well here, but, but that was an anomaly. I mean, there was a lot more resources plowed into that process here than you see in a place like Flint. Um, and, and so this is, this is a consequence of that happening, and we got to sort of sit down and figure out well, how to prevent it. It's also a consequence of it, yeah, a city that doesn't have money. And I think the city council was really pushing in the spring and saying, hey, we want to get hooked back up to the Detroit system well, they can't in, the, in the interim. Yeah. And well, they, they said, could. well, $12 it's million, just... dollars. we don't have $12 million and to that's right. do so that. And that's right. So, you know, in, th in theory, it was a good plan. It saved them about $12 million a year. So they, 
you know, then the, ultimately it will be a, a good plan once they get that pipeline built out to yeah, Lake Huron. Yeah. But they shouldn't have switched. So they shouldn't have switched until that pipeline was on. But that's in the theory, fear. In, okay, I, so, I mean, that's so you're going to say, in theory, it was good. They saved $12 million, and, and I agree. You're going to save money in the long run. I worked up in Flint back in 98 to 2000, and from then on, people were talking about, we've got to get off the Detroit system. We're at the mm -hmm. end of the line. We've got to figure out a, another way to do that. So, yes, kudos to them for finally stepping forward and saying, we're going to hook up to this new pipeline. But my thing is that you saved $12 million right now not staying on the Detroit system until that pipeline was fixed and, and linking up. How much money are you going to spend now that you have a population of younger children right. that now have le some kind of lead in their system that now have maybe decreased IQ? Well, that's, They're I mean, going to be coming up in a school system that maybe isn't equipped to handle them. That to me is a is a public health crisis that you're going to be paying for $12 million, $12 million dollars yeah. times $12 million. And that's why they need to either reconnect until they get that pipeline built or get these filters out. So they can't, Apparently they the filters can't reconnect are, because the pipe that they were using to connect to the, the to DWSD doesn't belong to them anymore. That was that was sold uh, to Genesee County, and so they, they don't really have a lot of options. I mean, you, you are stuck on that system until the next system is is ready, unless you want to build a new pipe into DWSD, which well, they, would cost they didn't you destroy uh, that pipe. Well, but they, they don't own it, and so they can't. No, use but it. I mean, you can work through the politics of it, and you know, ultimately, when they get that that pipeline next year from Lake Huron, they're going to be okay. In the meantime, they need to get filters out to these homes or reconnect. And well, and, that, system. and, and the, let's talk, let's talk the, about that filter system. Go ahead, Sue. I mean, the, 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 the fear here, I think, is that it, it gets to the core of the emergency manager law. I, I think the, the, the outside risk of emergency management is that you have somebody in who makes decisions based on short-term economics over things that, that cities have to do public safety, public health, things like that. And I think this is the the, the, the worst example we have seen this today wasn't of that. This was on Flint. There, was, not, support, there Flint. was support in the political they structure liked it too. in Flint for this. So this was an example of, of you, they forced a decision on the elected officials. They just made a decision they didn't think was going to turn out this way, and it did. Now they have to deal with it. Let's talk about a little bit of the, the politics and the, and the optics of this, Nolan. And you referred to those 1,500 water filters that the mm -hmm. governor's office and the administration helped get to people through this, um, and I wrote this down, the concerned pastors for social action. So when a donation came into the state from an anonymous donor saying, here, take these filters and make sure that they're passed out to the community. And these pastors said the, the Snyder administration told them to keep it quiet where this came from and to not say that they were, they were involved. Why would that be if, mm -hmm. if the water was okay? Well, because they only had 10% of the, of the filters they needed. And I think <laughs> they didn't want to uh, create a stampede. I don't know why they did it that way, but... I mean, this is a problem that's got to be solved. I would expect the next day or two you're going to hear the the governor's office say we're going to give filters to everybody if they can get that many filters. Yeah, it's a little is late. Is it too little too late? Oh, okay, little there, late. there's well, my you, question. Yeah. Is it too you, little too late? Well, you got to do it. I mean, you they can't will keep do this it. water coming into people's but houses. But I think there's a potential. It's never too late to fix a problem. So, so, so the potential downside for the governor is you knew the water was bad. You uh, participated in a small-scale uh, effort to help, kept it quiet while right. thousands of other people uh, suffered. I, that, if I'm Governor Snyder, I don't want to answer for that. I mean, he doesn't have to run uh, for election again, but but that kind of negligence in, in uh, the chief executive's office, I think, is is pretty significant and ought to, be, ought to be accounted for somehow. So how do you think that they're going to respond to this, Nolan, and how would you tell them to respond to I this? I think they're going to get those, those filters. Um, to folks, I think that's the quickest you gotta do that. solution. You got to do that, and hopefully that'll carry them over until they've got a a better source of water in that system. Okay, so you have filters. Any other c expenditures? I mean, can we expect some kind of lump sum coming towards Flint in in any way, shape, or form to help them out with this? Well, I don't know. I mean, and again, the question is, what would you do? You, the the pipe that 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 connected them to DWSD is not available to them anymore and so they they really are stuck with the situation they have until this new system that they're building comes online and I you know that's not a money question it's a practicality one so 
I, I, I don't know what I don't know what another solution might, might look like. You know, it just it just shakes my head. Anytime you think of families that you know really don't have a choice, and in this whole matter, and you've got and you've got children who are being raised in this environment, and we've created now this next generation of, of problems for ourselves, um, and and for these families, and it's just I I will be very interested to hear what comes out of the governor's office this week. And well, I think I mean, a lot of people uh, in and, Flint and I will well. say that I've been pretty disappointed in the governor's sort of dancing around this all week hadn't been hadn't didn't admit that there was a problem until middle of the week when when this report came out more than a week ago I mean uh, there, there is a, there is an obtuseness uh, going on here as well to how serious this is for the people who live in Flint all right last word on this Nolan you know I think they'll uh, come up with a, a solution but uh, you know in the meantime we've got to get people clean water they should be trucking water in and, and uh, trucking bottled water in just like they would do you know if there were a natural so, disaster. So I mean so do we have to wait for some kind of private entity to step up? Are we just going to see corporations? Are well, you no, going to see already are. Someone? whether I'm FEMA sure or somebody might it. might come and help? I don't know. Uh, well, it depends on... That was sort of a self-inflicted disaster. I don't yeah. know if they will or not. <laughs> yeah well the reminder is there is no such safe level for any kind of lead exposure.